Well, hello and welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent and in this lesson we're going to discuss scientific notation. Now scientific notation is a convenient way of writing numbers that helps to avoid confusion that comes sometimes from having lots of zeros either before the number or after the number. But before I can teach you about scientific notation I have to remind you of exponents and how they work. Now you probably know that exponents indicate that a number has been multiplied by itself. And the way that we indicate that is by putting a superscript after the number that was multiplied repeatedly. So for example, if I took 7 times 7 times 7, well that's 3 7, so I could write that as 7 to the third power. Or we call that 7 cubed. So this 3, the superscript, is the exponent that indicates 7 was multiplied by itself 3 times. We can also do the same thing if we divide by a number multiple times. So now in this case I divided by 4 three different times. So now I write it as 4 but because it was on the bottom or divided by it becomes negative 3 instead of positive 3. Well again as I mentioned in science oftentimes our numbers can be really large or really small. So to avoid confusion with all of the zeros that sometimes come with large or small numbers we're going to use scientific notation. So basically the way it'll work is we're going to write just the significant digits and then we're going to follow those up with the power of 10. So you're going to get a format that looks something like this. Where these here are the significant digits. So this is called the coefficient. And then it's multiplied by a power or a base. And in our case the base is 10. So in scientific notation we're always using what's called base 10. So it's the significant digits multiplied by 10 to the power of something. So the first step is just to pull out the significant digits and then move the decimal until it's just after the first one. And the next step is to figure out, okay, how many places did the decimal have to move to get to that position? Now if the decimal moved to the left, then that indicates we have a positive power of 10. So for example, 300 million meters per second, that's the speed of light. Okay, so which of these digits are significant? What well, we learned in our previous lesson on significant digits, that zeros after a number, the ones here on the right, or the trailing zeros, are never significant unless there's a decimal. And there isn't a decimal, so the only significant digit is this 3. So I go ahead and I write that 3 over here. Okay, now I'm going to move the decimal until it is just after the first significant digit. So I want it to be right here. So, how many times would I have to move the decimal from the understood position here to get it over to here. Well I'd have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. So I write that as 3 times 10 to the 8. Because it really is, if I took 3 and multiplied it by 10 8 times, I would get 300 million. Now for smaller numbers, the decimal moves the other way and then we get a negative power of 10. So a negative power of 10 indicates the decimal must have moved to the right. So for example, let's say I have 0 0.000000140. Okay, the first step is I want to figure out which digits are significant. Well again, in our previous lesson on significant digits, we learned that zeros to the left of a number or the leading zeros are never significant. So none of these are significant. Now zeros after a number are if there's a decimal and there is, right? So we have three significant digits. Okay, so I go ahead and I write those three significant digits again. And then I want to move the zero and then I want to move the decimal until it's just after the first significant digits. I'm going to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So that becomes 1.40 times 10 to the negative seventh. Again, it's negative because I moved the decimal to the right. And again, if you were to take 1.40 and basically divide it by 10 7 times, again this negative means you're dividing it, if you were to divide it by 10 7 times you would get 0 0.000000140. Okay, so let's try a few examples here. We're going to take standard notation, or what's also called decimal notation sometimes, and convert it into this scientific notation. So number one here says, the distance from the Earth to the Moon is 238,900 miles. Okay, so first off, which of these digits are significant? Well again, zeros on the end are never significant unless there's a decimal and there isn't. So I'm going to just not count these. So the only significant ones are the 2, 3, 8, and 9. So I'm going to write 2, 3, 8, and 9. 
Okay, now it said the next step was to move the decimal until you got it after the first significant digit here. Okay, so how many times would I have to move the decimal from the assumed position right here over to get it right here after the first significant one? Well, I would go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I moved it five places. And since I was moving it to the left, that is a positive five. Because again, 238,900 is the same as taking 2.389 and multiplying it by 10 five times. Okay, how about another one? The mass of a dust particle is 0 0.000000000753 kilograms. So I think you agree. All these zeros are a bit confusing and a lot more work than trying to write it in scientific notation. Okay, so step one. Which of all of these numbers are actually significant? Well, the zeros on the left never are, right? Leading zeros are never significant. So only the seven, the five, and the three. So I'm gonna write seven, five, three. Okay, now I have to move the decimal from its position here, and I've gotta get it down to here. So it's right after the first significant digit. So I would have to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. So I'm gonna put the decimal here, and I moved that ten times. But now I moved it to the right, so it's negative 10, remember. Because again, if I were to take 7.53 and divide it by 10, 10 times, I would get this number. So now let's try a few. We're going to convert scientific notation back into standard notation or decimal notation. So number three here says, the hydrogen oxygen bond in water has a length of 9.584 times 10 to the negative 11th meters. So we're gonna go ahead and write the coefficient here first. So 9.584, and the 10 to the negative 11th tells me it's basically been divided by 10 11 times. So if you're dividing, it's gonna be a small number. So I'm, I'm gonna move the decimal back to the left. How many times? Well, 11 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So, every position here has to be filled in with a zero. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And just for clarity's sake, I'll put in the zero here in the front, too. So, 0 0.000000000984 is the same as 9.584 times 10 to the negative 11th. Okay, so number four says Mount Everest has a height of 2.9029 times 10 to the fourth feet. So the first step is to take 2.9029. Take out all the significant digits and just rewrite those. And now I have to move them how many times? Well, 10 to the fourth tells me to move the decimal four times. Well, the question is, is the decimal gonna move to the left or the right? Well, if I'm multiplying by 10 four times, the number's gonna get bigger. It's gonna get 10 times bigger, then 100, then 1,000, then 10,000. So I've gotta move it to the right four times. So it's gonna go one, two, three, four. So it's gonna wind up here. So it's basically 29,029 feet. And let's do one last one. It says a carbon atom weighs 2.00 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. Okay, so the first thing is I have to write all the significant digits here again. So two, zero, zero. This is grams. Now I have to move the decimal 23 places and the negative tells me it must be a really small number because I'm dividing by 10 23 times. So I'm gonna move it this way to the left 23 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So right here. So I'm gonna have a lot of zeros in here to fill in all the places the decimal would have to move. So we see quickly why scientific notation is much preferred to standard or decimal notation because it saves me having to write all of these zeros. And again, it avoids all the confusion. So zero point, all these zeros, two zero zero is the same as 2.00 times 10 to the negative 23rd. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on scientific notation. In the next video, I'm going to work a few more practice problems where we'll go through and turn standard notation into scientific notation 
and vice versa. So hope you'll join us back here next time at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.